had an acoustic guitar in the house um, when I was very young, like seven, eight, nine, ten years old. And I used to just pick it up and sort of make noise with it. I would just, you know, take uh, things and, you know, kind of do stuff like that. And my father, my, my brother and I would actually write songs uh, even though we, we didn't know how to play instruments at all. So one of us would be singing a melody line and the other one would be sort of humming the bass note that represented the chord. And uh, eventually my father said, you know, you guys should learn how to play an instrument. And I, we had a drum set and I could actually play drums a little bit like Ringo Starr kind of easy beats. And so I wanted to be a drummer, but my brother kind of raised his hand first and said, I want to play drums. So uh, I said, okay, I'll play guitar. And I took like three guitar lessons when I was about 10 years old. And I didn't learn anything at all because they would they were basically trying to you know it was the Mel Bay book and you know you learn melodies and you, you have to they're trying to teach you how to sight read and the problem was I had a pretty good ear so I could hear melodies um, so if I if the melody was supposed to go you know um, I would just remember what it sounds like and then pretend to be reading when I would come back the next week and aside from that you know I wanted to hear I wanted to play stuff that I heard on the radio you know, I wanted to hear, I wanted to play like, you know, The Who and Led Zeppelin and, you know, bar chords and, you know, that kind of. But uh, nobody was really teaching me that. So around the same age, I had, um, my parents had foster kids that were, they were staying at the house. Um, that were teenagers, um, 15, 16 years old, and one of the kids played guitar. So he taught me open chords like C and G and these kinds of chords. And that was amazing to me because finally my brother and I could write songs and actually have real music accompanying us. And, uh, and then I started to sort of pick up on things I'd hear on the radio. I'd hear, you know, you know. That kind of thing. And that's what I thought guitar playing was. I guess that is guitar playing, but I didn't even know what lead guitar was. So the foster kid that was the player, the guitar player, he eventually left <clears throat> and he came back to visit us about a year later and, I, and of course I was, said, let's go play guitar. And uh, we kind of sat down together and we started playing whatever we were playing, some kind of open chord stuff. And he did something that like blew my mind. He, in the middle of jamming, he went like this. He went, and I was, I was like, wait, wait, wait a minute. What was that? And uh, he's like, oh, I just took a, you know, I took this note and I, I bent it. And I just thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever heard in my life. So for the next six months, I was just bending notes everywhere. And I sort of inadvertently stumbled across the pentatonic scale and different sort of configurations. And my ear could tell after a while, then I was like sort of into, then I started hearing lead guitar playing on the radio. I'm like, hey, people do this. This actually is a thing that people do. And so if I heard a song, it didn't matter what key it was in, I might hear a song that was like. And so then I'd, I'd sort of go, let's see, where's it? Okay, so that. Uh, and then I just sort of started improvising and playing around and uh, mainly pentatonic and I didn't really know technical aspects of music that much but I knew when things sounded right. And that's really, that was my introduction to, to guitar playing. So that's, that's kind of how it started and then it evolved. I started learning 
uh, you know, popular guitar solos, you know, got into Jimmy Page, you know, you know those kind of classic lines, and, you know, the, discovered the blues box and, and stuff like that. And, it, and then uh, when Van Halen came out, and I w before I even go there, I w none of this was that serious to me. It was just a hobby, and it was just something I would do once in a while. And it was fairly easy for me to do. And it w really wasn't until Van Halen came out that I started to hear things that didn't make any sense to my ear. I'm like, how is this? Well, what? What's he? What is that? How? How is he? Wait a minute. I'm hearing these big. How's he getting all this stuff to happen? And it was strange because there were rumors that he was using his right hand. And I just assumed that that meant he was doing a finger picking a thing where, it, you know, if he had these intervals, that he was playing something like, uh, and then, you know, sort of doing a flamenco finger picking, you know, uh, which I can't do, but something that would sort of sound like. So I thought that's what was happening. So I actually took flamenco guitar lessons for about a month from this really good guitar player. He was a younger guy, he was probably in his 20s, but he was also a rock player. <clears throat> so the lessons were funny because I would go there, we would have long dis discussions about Hendrix and Van Halen, and then the last 10 minutes he'd say, okay, go through pages one, two, and three, or you know, seven, eight, and nine, and come back next week. So I didn't learn that much from him, and he could sort of play uh, those patterns in a flamenco style. And I thought, you know, that sounds pretty good, but there was something that didn't quite uh, sound exactly like the stuff I was hearing Van Halen do with tapping. So eventually, uh, some friends of, me and some friends went to see them live at Nassau Coliseum. And I just wanted to go get a free guitar lesson. I actually wasn't a big fan of the band. I, I was just a fan of him. And, uh, Van Halen came out on stage, very first song, you know, he comes out there and, and does his thing. I'm like, oh my God, that's it. I couldn't wait to get home and just plug into my guitar and play, you know, Eruption or something off the first album. So that was really when I got more serious about guitar playing. First key moment of my career was getting a record contract. And, uh, I, you know, as soon as I graduated from high school, almost immediately I put a band together and we started playing, you know, parties and, uh, you know, it, which eventually evolved into playing clubs and getting paid. So the professional part of it started immediately, but the most, but the first significant thing was when I got my record deal. And that was the result of trying to just get a record deal. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, uh, I got signed to Shrapnel Records that basically featured guitar players and featured really high level guitar playing. And it was owned by a, uh, a guy by the name of Mike Barney. And he discovered people like Yngwie Malmsteen and Paul Gilbert and you know, Vinnie Moore and Tony McAlpine and all these amazing uh, guys that were doing things way ahead of their time back in the mid to late 80s. Um, and so the, the spotlight column that he had in Guitar Player Magazine was simply a column that invited you know, unknown guitarists to submit their tapes. And if he liked it, then he would feature you in his magazine. And uh, at that point, we had already been trying to get record contracts. We, we were writing songs and doing all kinds of things. But um, I just sent him a tape th thinking, you know, who knows? I, I didn't even expect it to get heard. Uh, but one of the things I did do is I sent, um, I sent the tape to the P.O. box that, that he requested. And I also simultaneously sent a tape directly to the Guitar Player Magazine main office via Federal, Federal Express. So I knew somebody would have to sign for it. Somebody would have to physically have the package. And I thought this might increase the chances of it getting to Mike Varney and getting it directly to him. And it really worked because I sent the tape and got a phone call from Mike Varney the very next day. And he said, uh, you know, I got your tape. I, I like it. Uh, I'm going to feature you. And then he said, uh, would you be interested in doing an album with me? And I, I, I couldn't believe it. I just thought, I can't believe this. So uh, I guess to answer your question, that was probably the, one of the first significant um, moments of my career. I think another one would probably be getting the Michael Jackson gig, which was incredible. You know, the biggest, probably, the, you know, arguably the biggest artist ever. And uh, 
you know, thanks to Jennifer Batten and her recommendation, I was able to uh, go out on that tour for about five weeks and it was just one of the most incredible experiences of my life. <laughs> I have a, a good friend who's actually a, a great drummer and he's played on, he's toured with me and uh, played on some albums, Gianluca Palmieri. And I, I think he was already sort of friends with the company. <clears throat> and I'm not sure, I might be giving him uh, undue credit, but I think he sort of was responsible for mentioning me. And at that, at that time, I, I sort of had decided I don't want to work with any companies. I had a lot of, you know, working with companies is not quite always uh, the dream that a lot of guys think it is. Um, but he said, you know, DV Mark's a bunch of really cool guys. They, they got some great products. So I, I think I got an email from DV Mark and they, they said, we'd like to send you some amps, see if you like them. Uh, they sent me some amps and I could tell they were good quality. They were very good at what they were. But it was strange because the amps that I got were either really, really sort of rectifiery heavy metal or they were really clean jazz kind of amps. And uh, you know, my, my thing has always been somewhere kind of in the middle of that. And so I, I said, you know, I think your products are really cool, but there's not really anything here that works for me. And then I think Marco said, well, you know, we'd like to, what do, what, what do you want? What do you want? You know, let's, if, you, if you don't like what we've got, we, let's develop something. And then uh, that's really what started to happen. We just started to form a communication. And I suggested that rather than try to do this via email, you know, fly me out there and we can work directly with each other and try to develop something that works. And, uh, and that's what we've done and it's been amazing. The company's, it's, it's a family, you know, it's a family atmosphere, it's a family vibe. And uh, it's been a great situation because we both learn from each other and so, at this point, we've gotten into a, an amazing amplifier that's going to come out in January. Um, it's really their, it's, it's a real, you know, hand-wired amp. It's going to be, um, it's not going to be, you know, manufactured in China or anything like that. It's going to be made here at the factory in, in Italy. Um, all I can say is it's, it's, it's sincerely one of the greatest amps I've ever played through, and it's been this long to develop it. So, so the little GH250 is a really cool solid state amplifier that can fit in a guitar case. And for people that like me who are working, who aren't, you know, Justin Timberlake, uh, and have to, you know, be very resourceful and creative when it comes to traveling and taking as much stuff as you can in as little package as possible. The amp is amazing because it's, it's a fat sound. It's got, uh, I generally don't really get into solid state stuff, but this particular amp, uh, I think they, they know me well enough and I think they just sort of, they've learned, DV Mark has learned a lot about what guitar players want. And so the amp actually feels nice, particularly for a solid state amp. And I'll probably be, uh, I'm gonna be going on tour with uh, Stu Hamm um, in a few weeks and uh, bringing this amp with me. So it's good enough for that. And I'm pretty, you know, I'm, I'm pretty demanding when it comes to tone. But so it's a great, it's a great situation because it's, it's small, it's light, it, and they actually have a guitar case designed to fit the amp in. So you can literally carry your rig with you on an airplane. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you.